episode of The Ordinary Gentleman. I'm your host Anton Biertge and tonight I have a guest with me, Tommy van der Vault of Imprint Ministries. Thanks, Welcome Anton. Tommy. Thanks. Um, well Tommy, you have been a friend of mine for a long time and someone that I really look up to as a man mm. um, and as a, as a father uh, who's, who's been in the game a little bit longer than me. Mm. And you recently told me about this family code that you have, code of conduct. And I was just intrigued by this because you've obviously been very intentional about the way that you are seeking to raise your your children and uh, your boys in particular. You've got two, two boys. boys. Yeah. Um, and so I just wanted to hear what brought you to draw up this code of conduct mm. and, and why you've included certain things. Yeah. Yeah, so a few years ago, uh, we were in India, um, and I just realized the, the huge responsibility that I have, uh, raising specifically my boys, uh, to be men. Um, I think if you look at scripture that, um, wives are being washed by the word, uh, by, by the men, and the men takes care of them, um, in the Old Testament, they were part of the covenant because of the man, he received the blessing. Um, so it wasn't that I wasn't intentional in raising my, my girl. Um, obviously I, I do raise her intentionally, but I think there's a sp- specific emphasis on, on the boys. Um, I pray that my, my, my girl will also have a husband that will take care of her. Like I would raise my boys, but I think there's a specific and a, and a special, uh, need for boys to be to be raised well. Um, I remember I was reading through the Old Testament uh, Genesis where I saw Adam was he was passive. Um, he didn't protect his wife well. Yeah. Um, and then I, I read Joshua and specifically, and that what struck me in Joshua twenty four fifteen where it says, "For me and my household, we will serve the Lord." So he he took responsibility there. Um, and then I started thinking. I was like, okay, hang on. If I say, me and my household will serve the Lord, what would it entail and what would it take? And I just realized it it, it needs, I need to be intentional about this. Mm. And that's how this uh, code of conduct came about. Um, I think that's that great. Like you said, uh, as <laughs> as the, the leaders and those who are in authority ultimately over their families, your boys are going to have huge influence. So... Mm. If you can steer them in the right direction, that seems like a really good way to go. Yeah. Um, so how old are your children at the moment? Uh, Tyler turns five, uh, I think in two weeks' time, and Logan's turning seven in January. So okay, seven and then your five. daughter's the oldest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Would you mind just reading us the Code of Conduct so that we yeah. can then we can talk further about yeah. it? Yeah. So it's the Funnervolt Manhood Code of Conduct. And it starts off Joshua 24, 15. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And then it says, I will uh, fight for my faith, reject passivity, accept responsibility, lead courageously, run the race until I receive my reward, grow in my will to obey, have a woman to love, accept that I always have a work to do, be united to one Lord in one faith and with one hope. And above all, I will strive and fight to uphold loyalty, servant leadership, kindness, humility, purity, honesty, self-discipline, excellence, integrity, and perseverance. Sheesh, that's that's fantastic because that's really, uh, I think, is a summary of all the sort of qualities that we at Ordinary Gentlemen believe that a, a man, an ordinary Christian man ought to be mm. fostering in his own life. And just to see that you're right from the a, an early age trying to see those developed in your own two sons, yeah. that's, that's great. Um, just in terms of, of some of those things that you've written there, uh, some of them are just of a, of a good moral upstanding character, sort of mm. virtues that that many would acknowledge to be good things yeah. and others are specifically Christian. The one that stood out for me was I will have one, one Lord and one faith, mm. something to that effect. Yeah. yeah. It sounds to me like you're uh, raising your sons expecting that they'll be saved. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think that there's a, there's a way, um, I think it's Proverbs 22 that says, 
uh, raise your kids in the way they should go. And even when they're older, they won't depart from it. Um, I know I don't have the power to save them. That's the Holy Spirit's work. Uh, but I do think that there's a, there's a, almost a, well, again, that word intentional way of teaching them truth. Yes. Um, and they respond to truth. If they, if they don't have truth, what are they going to respond to? Um, so I do all the work, the, the physical and the almost academic work, and the spirit does the spirit's work. So to enlighten their hearts, That's I great. can't do that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But you're going to do what you've been called to do. Yeah. I mean, just from my own testimony, um, my parents raised me uh, up in a Christian home or I was raised in a Christian home and I, I took the, the, the road more traveled. Um, but when I did get shaken by the spirit, there, there was a, a knowledge that I, a foundation that I could land on. I'm like, Oh, hang on a second. I, I've got truth here. So, and then I had the equipment to ask the right questions at least. So, okay. Yeah. So then that was sort of a seed that had been planted, which yeah. came to, germinated later on yeah yeah so just in light of that following on um so you you're raising them with the intention that uh, so far as it depends on you they will one day uh, follow in your footsteps not only in terms of virtues but mm. in terms of your faith yeah uh, i was just wondering if if we have someone listening who isn't a, a christian mm. would he be able to take this code of conduct and, and implement it straight into his family do you think I think some of them, um, like the one that you mentioned, no. Um, if he doesn't know the Lord, um, he, he wouldn't know that he needs to be united to one Lord, one faith, one hope. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely think that it is geared towards um, people that believe and have faith in the Lord. Um, yeah. But I mean, if you think of uh, reject passivity, I think that's a, it's a great virtue to have yeah. in general. Uh, or accept responsibility, lead courageously. Yeah, that's, oh, have a woman to love. Um, I think that those are all good virtues, but it's, it's almost empty and pointless if you're not saved because mm. um, that works towards your relationship with, with the Father. Um, and even if you strive for that, it builds back into your family as well and in your work life. And so, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah and just as I listen to it, I, I would would agree with you that there's a lot that we anyone would agree is is a good thing for a boy to grow up mm. with um, but I think in terms of how much that's going to be evidenced in his life mm. I think also you're going to get far closer to that goal with through the power of the Holy Spirit than yeah. you are through yeah. Uh, just your own willpower and exertion yeah and I think something what you mentioned as well it's it, what we talked about is that I give them the knowledge that they react on uh, and the, or towards the spirit and the spirit moved their heart. But I, I think also, I mean, I've seen a lot of people that are saved, but they don't love the church because they didn't see how it was loved. So I think there are certain spiritual aspects that I can teach my boys that if you are saved, you need to love the church. You need to be mm. committed, a committed, healthy member of a church. And I think that comes through by me showing them that. Um, obviously, again, the spirit can work in that. Uh, but I think it's just, they'll just grow much quicker and faster and more robust in a way that if I showed them that, that they would just be healthier Christians, not yeah. just saved. I don't want just my kids to be a, a good, saved Christian. I want them to be a healthy, um, fruitful, multiplying Christian. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, just one other thing that I'd like to pick up a specific. Uh, you mentioned uh, have one one woman to love. Mm -hmm. um, so w you would be encouraging your boys to to get married rather than remain single. Why would you Why would you be pushing them in that direction? Yeah, I, th I think that it's it's a natural thing. I th if you go back to Genesis, God said, "Be fruitful and multiply." Mm. Um, and I don't only think that it's biological. I think it's spiritual. So again, be fruitful, multiply, so that you have offspring, so that you can show them the Lord. I, I think that um, that's your first mission field. It yeah. would be your kids or your family. Um, so I think that's what the Lord meant. It's like be fruitful and make more of who you are 
uh, the children of God. Yeah. So I think that, and you can't do that if you don't have a woman to love. Um, and then there's a whole host of modern day things that flows from it. You need to love a woman. Um, yeah. And yeah. So yeah. yeah. No, I appreciate that. And and <laughs> oh, many um, manly or, or biblical uh, characteristics of biblical masculinity, I think, are going to to sort of come to fruition or to the fore mm. in that pursuit. Mm. Um, a, a man is going to have to reject passivity. He's going to yeah. have to not be lazy. He's yeah. going to have to step up and provide for, protect, um, die to self. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I would agree with you in terms of the goal. Yeah. Um, and I, th I think they've also become, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say you're a lesser man if you're not married, but you're a fuller man when you're married. I mean, when I got married, I was confronted about some sin in my life that would have never come to the forefront if I wasn't married. Mm. And because of that selfishness, um, the, the way I need to gently love my wife as Christ has loved the church, if you're not married, there's, there's nothing like that. Um, so I think there is an aspect of just further growth mm. Um, in a relationship. Yeah, thanks for that. So just in, in general and, and maybe in closing, um, it sounds to me as you, you read these things that you've got, you've got some a very intentional approach to raising your boys mm. in a certain way. You want them to be like this and not like this. Yeah. Um, and, and I think some people might look at that and say, but aren't you brainwashing your mm. kids? Mm. Uh, how would you respond to that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's, um, it, yeah, you need to show kids where they should go. I mean, um, a baby needs to know where, it, it's not going to automatically know where to go and sleep or um, how to use a spoon. Um, yeah. It's all taught. Um, and, and again, we're intentional we Christians, it's our mission field for our kids to know the Lord. Um, um, so I, I think that's, that's where it starts. This is the way you should go, Proverbs 22. So I need to teach you the way you should go. Yeah. That's what the Lord said. Yeah. Um, so how am I going to do that is by reminding you what is truth over and over. And if you want to call it brainwashing, I, I'm just calling it teaching, yeah. um, which is quite natural for someone to take responsibility, be intentional, and do do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a practical outworking of love. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He, he who hates his son spares the rod. Yeah. Um, but yeah. he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. Yeah. And and one of the dis the ways of disciplining is formative discipline. Exactly. Uh, which I think is this is an example of. So yeah. thank you so much for your time. Yeah, pleasure. And uh, just with regard to imprint, mm -hmm. if people would like to find out a little bit more about that ministry, uh, where can they go? To, to find out. You can either go to our Facebook page, it's Imprint On, or our website, www.imprinton.org. Fantastic. And, yeah. and what, do you, what do you do there? So we, um, we strive to leave a healthy mark on the ever-growing church in Africa by providing uh, practical resources, biblical trustworthy uh, resources and training for churches. So at the moment Fantastic. during lockdown, it's YouTube videos, going through some books, um, and also a podcast. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, we'll put those links in the description. Uh, and as always, uh, may, may God find us faithful. Mm -hmm.